So today this session explains two basic notions of control system that is controllability and observability. Notions means ideas or beliefs. If we consider the developments of control system, all the developments that happened after 1950 are considered as modern control techniques and all developments before 1950 are considered as classical control techniques. In that sense, controllability and observability can be treated as two major contributions of modern control era. This session basically aims to give a clear concept of controllability and observability. The mathematical descriptions will be there in the upcoming videos. So to discuss controllability and observability, one should have an idea about controller design. For a controller design, we should first identify the system to be controlled. The system will have certain actuators and sensors. The purpose of this actuator is to impart control forces and the purpose of sensors is basically for measuring the states. So what the controller does is it tries to figure out what it can do with the Y that is the sensor output and the reference signal. So once it gets it, the value of R and Y it checks the difference and tries to generate the actuating signal. Here comes the importance of controllability and observability. If a system has proper set of actuators, we say that the system is controllable and when the system has a proper set of sensors, we say that the system is observable. So here we identify how important it is the presence of actuators and sensors as far as a controller design is concerned. Hence, controllability and observability are highly related to the controller design. So, if the system is not controllable, then we need to work with actuators and if the system is not observable, then we need to work with sensors. Here we consider a simple definition for controllability. It is a condition in which control signals exist that allow the system to reach any state in a finite amount of time. Hence controllability basically implies reachability. So a controllability does not mean that the system states must be held at a particular value but it is only required that the states can be reached. We now consider a better example. So let us assume that there is a car moving on the road and the car is assumed to be controllable. Here we consider two state variables that is position and velocity. While defining the state I had mentioned that state is a set of minimum set of variables that is that are required to define the system. As far as this system is concerned we need only the position and velocity. So we assume a state plane where the state variables are plotted. If we have higher dimensions of state variables then we could use a state space. Here when we say that the car is controllable it means that the car can be made to reach any position on the road by accelerating and braking and also the can, car can speed up to any velocity in the state space. Here comes the importance of the term reachability. Not only can the each state variable be achieved individually, each combination of the variables can also be achieved. For example, we could accelerate the car in such a way that it reaches a position of 1 km and has a speed of 60 km per hour. It doesn't mean that the car should be there. It is physically impossible also to maintain that state as the car is moving. And thus con controllability requires that the system should be able to reach a state but not necessarily maintain it. Now we move to the next term observability. Here it is defined as knowing all critical states. As far as the previous example is concerned the car's temperature can be known. It can be treated as a state. But it is very clear that the temperature of the car has nothing to do with 
the dynamics of the system. So, as far as the dynamics of the system are, is concerned, we can say that only the state position and velocity are required. Hence, when we make a state model, it is very important that we should have an idea about the relevant states. Unwanted states can be removed. So, observability basically implies knowledge of critical states of the state model. We move on to a higher dimension system where the position, velocity and yo of the system are known. So, in this case, we include their rates also. Rate in the sense derivatives. So, a state model can be made like px, py, px dot, py dot, phi and phi dot. Phi is the yo or the direction angle. Here the inputs are the steering wheel and the pedal, brake pedal. They are the actuators and the outputs or the sensors are the eyes and the speedometer. So, we can use our eyes to identify the position and direction of the car and also we can look at the speedometer to get the velocity. Suppose that we close our eyes. This is equivalent to making C equal to 0. In that case, none of the states are available. Even then the steering wheel and the pedal are available so that the states can be controlled or the system is controllable according to the definition. So, the lack of controllability has made us to a point where the states cannot be made to a safe destination. That is the car cannot be taken to a safe destination. That's all. But even then the system is controllable. When we say that the system is controllable, the inputs are available for controlling the system. We take a different example wherein the B value is 0. For example, let us say that the car skids and the steering control and the pedal control are lost. So, even if that is the case, the measurements are available. We can see the position, we can see the speedometer, we can see the direction. It is very important that these two notions that is controllability and observability are highly important and without proper actuators and sensors the system is prone to fail. So they work together. Even if the system is partially uncontrollable and unobservable it is still troublesome. When we try to detach the steering wheel and drive with pedals alone what will happen? We can't control the system. So, it is essential that all the critical states and critical inputs should be there. Only then the system can be a proper one. If one of the state is uncontrollable, the entire system is uncontrollable. So, it is a case for observability too. Now, we will see what is the meaning of observing a state. When we say observing a state. Not all the states need sensors and some states can be identified from the available sensors while others can be calculated from this data. They can be calculated. For example, we can find the velocity by the derivative of the position. We can also find position from by integrating the velocity. So, even if only one term is there or one sensor is there, we can identify the other one. So, observing a system does not mean that there should be all sensors. You should have methods to identify the other states from the available ones. These two are the different case, two different cases that are in front of control engineers. That is the sensors can be very costly or inappropriate and the also, also the measurements can be very sensitive. When I say sensitive, let us assume the case where velocity is identified by taking the derivative of position. In this case, if the position sensor is highly noisy, then the velocity can also be noisy. Hence, we can say that the control action is basically a trade-off between cost and sensitivity. So, the control engineer should be very careful to identify which should be given prior importance, whether the cost or sensitivity. Finally, we conclude the session by saying, the ideas of controllability and observability once again.
controllability basically gives the availability of proper actuators and observability basically checks the availability of proper sensors if these two are there then any control design is practically possible and controllability and observability thus remains as basic pillars of control design thank you